Hello again. This is video two of the lecture, How to Manage Dosage and Side Effects of Lithium and Persuade Patients to Take It. In this video, we're going to talk about baseline testing and dosing. So for baseline, before starting lithium, you should get kidney function testing, of course, creatinine, BUN, and estimated GFR, which is derived from those data. You should get thyroid function tests. Weight and BMI are important to have at baseline. Electrolytes, urinalysis to see if they can concentrate urine. EKG, not always. It's indicated sometimes if there are risk factors or if you know that they have existing cardiovascular disease. Lithium can prolong the QTC a little bit, so that would be why you might want to get one. Pregnancy, see if the person is pregnant if indicated. And finally, calcium. Also, parathyroid and vitamin D are recommended in some recent studies. As far as ongoing monitoring, it should be with lithium level, electrolytes, thyroid, and estimated GFR every six months. Some have argued that it should be every four months, and certainly it should be more often in the elderly and those with established renal impairment. I think the APA practice guidelines had said six months, but some have thought that maybe we should go a little bit more frequent than that. For dosage and titration, lithium comes in capsules or white pills that are salty tasting. There is a regular release version of these capsules and pills that have a 24-hour half-life, and then there are also longer-acting preparations, now generic as well. So what do you use? Usually you want to start your outpatients with 300 milligram or 300 milligram twice daily, unless there are drug interactions that you are going to be concerned about. For example, they may be on an NSAID. I'll have in a few seconds a few more to say about those drug interactions. Within patients, you can usually be more aggressive and start with 300 three times a day. I spread it out over several times when you're beginning a larger dose like that for an inpatient just to be sure you don't get any acute side effects after each dose. Later, you will be able to shift patients to once a day, usually evening or nighttime dosage. You check a 12-hour level in five or six days. That's when you've reached steady state, more or less. Now, as I said, you do shift to once daily. Why do you do that? Because studies have shown there's lower urine volume and other symptoms of renal dysfunction with once a day nightly dosage. I see a lot of people keeping people on twice or even three times a day lithium. This is not in accord with the best evidence that we have for safety with respect to the kidney. It's important to know, though, that if you give it at night, the dose is about 20% lower than in divided doses because the kidneys filter lithium more slowly while you're sleeping. So let's say they're on 1,500 milligrams spread out over two or three doses. Then the nighttime dose would be 1,200 milligrams. You should check a blood level, though, to ensure that it stays the same. There may be variations in this 20% difference from patient to patient. So when you see what your trough level is 12 hours after your last dose on the divided dose, you then check it again after putting them on the 20% lower dose at bedtime. Studies have shown that the toleration and the clinical benefit for the underlying disorder, the bipolar disorder, these are comparable with the once-a-day dosing. You don't lose anything. What you gain, though, is there's a period of time before the next dose where they have a relatively low lithium level. In other words, they continue having a level that drops further following their trough level at 12 hours, so that a lower trough just before the next 24-hour dose occurs. And this has a sparing effect. To have this opportunity once a day, a sparing effect occurs, apparently, on the kidneys to reduce the risk of kidney harm, and urine volume being one of the indicators of that. This table is from the American Society of Clinical Psychopharmacology Model Curriculum for Psychopharmacology 2018. And it has a list of drugs that increase lithium levels, drugs that decrease them, and those that seem to have no difference, do not seem to affect levels. I'll just read you the list. Those things that increase lithium levels include thiazide diuretics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, or NSAIDs, except for certain exceptions that I'll mention, 
ACE inhibitor antihypertensives, angiotensin II receptor antagonists, which are also antihypertensives, metronidazole, low sodium diets, dehydration, the elderly in general have higher lithium levels, and renal disease. The things that decrease levels are acetazolamide, mannitol, theophylline, Those are things we don't use too much these days, but the next three you will encounter. Caffeine, those heavy caffeine users out there, will get decreased lithium levels. Mania causes levels to go down. It's not always the case when you see a patient who, with a lower than expected level who is now manic. The initial assumption might be that they've been not adhering with their lithium. But also there appears to be a phenomenon where lithium seems to increase its relative proportion intracellularly compared to extracellularly, which you're measuring in your plasma level. And this results in a lower level. But there's still plenty of lithium in the cells. So that lower level doesn't necessarily mean that you should raise the dose. In fact, you may get more lithium toxicity even in the presence of apparently low levels. So that's tricky to assess. And finally, pregnancy, especially in the more advanced months of it, result in lower lithium levels. So that there are those items which don't change levels that are desirable to use when indicated. And those include furosemide as a diuretic, amiloride. Amiloride usually doesn't change levels, but sometimes it does increase levels. So you should still check them, certainly. But generally, it's pretty safe with respect to level change. And then Sulindac is an NSAID that may not raise lithium levels the way other ones do. And aspirin doesn't raise lithium levels. All right, moving on to dosage and titration beyond the initial information I gave you. You should try to treat to get to a level for acute mania at or greater than 0.8 milliequivalents per liter. But for maintenance treatment, you want to bring the levels down to the optimal maintenance dose, which is 0.6 to 0.75 milliequivalents per liter. Levels higher than that for maintenance are sometimes needed for mania, for optimal maintenance of mania, but the higher levels are associated with more kicking the patient into depression. So it's considered best to keep the levels 0.6 to 0.75, and if you need additional help with controlling the manias, add in a second anti-manic agent of some sort, perhaps a second-generation antipsychotic. Lower levels than 0.6 to 0.75 may be adequate in the elderly and certainly could be safer. Another key issue with dosage, very, very key issue, is to avoid rapid discontinuations of lithium. This is associated with destabilization, early relapses, possibly increased suicide risk. This is one of the most difficult things to deal with in treating your lithium patient. They need to be explained. This needs to be explained to them, probably over and over, that this is a drug you do not want to abruptly discontinue. But some manics, that's exactly what they want to do, especially when they start to become manic, an early symptom of mania or hypomania before the major symptoms have kicked in, may be a change in thinking where they think, gee, they're feeling great, and maybe they don't have bipolar, and maybe they're fine, and maybe they don't need this lithium, and maybe it would be fine to stop it. That may be only one of many optimistic misjudgments they're making as they proceed into their mania. But obviously, an abrupt stopping of lithium at this point has a good chance of making things go downhill even faster. So for those people who get that early change in thinking, those are people that probably need a second antimanic in there to help prevent that early symptom. But for those who have the capacity to remember what you've said, they should be repeatedly reminded not to abruptly discontinue. And a third issue with dosage I want to mention is overdoses. They can sometimes produce severe toxicity and have fatal outcomes. Now, a few little details on drug interactions. What if the patient on lithium needs to take an NSAID? It varies a lot, according to Maudsley and others, but for some NSAIDs, the lithium levels can go up 50% within a few days. So if they need to start taking one, they should either be sure they know their baseline level and consider coming in for a second level after they've taken a few days of their NSAID. You don't want to lower lithium and risk relapse 
until you know you need to, but you also don't want to risk toxicity. So they need closer monitoring if you're going to use an enzyme like ibuprofen. Of course, if you can avoid them, that would be even better. There are certainly other options for pain. Okay, so in summary for video number two, the key points. In your baseline testing for lithium, get electrolytes, creatinine, estimated GFR, low marinure low filtration rate, BUN, thyroid function tests, EKG if they have risk factors, CBC if they have risk factors, and their weight. Monitor these every four to six months, but more frequently in the elderly or those with cardiovascular disease. Next key point, the preferred formulation for treating bipolar disorder is regular release, that is to say the 24-hour half-life lithium. I prefer the lithium capsules. They're less salty and don't give you at least the immediate salty taste that bothers some patients. And it should be given once a day at bedtime, at least following the titration period, to minimize the risk of kidney dysfunction and possibly other side effects, maybe less with once a day lithium. The preferred maintenance level at 12 hour trough is 0.6 to 0.75 milliequivalents per liter. You want to keep them in that range if possible. Lithium levels can be changed by NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors like lisinopril, angiotensin II inhibitors like lisartan, and lithium levels can be reduced by caffeine and mania. They are not changed usually by amylaride, furosemide, sulindac. And finally, the last key point, avoid rapid lithium discontinuations.